and welcome to this, the 21st episode of Rail Story. This week, by means of celebration, we look at the granddaddy of them all, Richard Trevithick. Trevithick was a Cornishman born in 1771, the only boy in a family of six. His father was a mine captain, and the young Richard did not perform very well at school, being described by his schoolmaster as disobedient, slow, obstinate, frequently absent, and very inattentive. It's not that Richard wasn't clever, it's just that school wasn't for him. He was fascinated by engineering, and in particular by steam, especially strong steam, or high-pressure steam. Trevithick proposed a working pressure of £50 per square inch, five times the pressure that James Watt thought was safe, and indeed the firm of Bolton and Watt of Birmingham actively campaigned against Trevithick's high-pressure engines on the grounds of safety. Trevithick is traditionally said to have built his first locomotive in summer 1802 for the Colebrookdale Iron Company. Despite there even being a replica locomotive which was built in 1990, the only evidence, and I mean the only evidence, for the existence of such a machine at Colebrookdale is in a letter from Trevithick of August 1802, which mentions that the Dale Company were forcing a carriage for the real roads. That's it. That's all there is, folks. There's no evidence that it was a locomotive, whether it was steam-powered or even that Trevithick had built it. There are no drawings of it, no sketches. The sum total of evidence is that one sentence in that letter of August 1802. Colebrookdale did use a Trevithick stationary engine and there are payments for it, and it's likely that the remains of this machine, coupled with the Trevithick letter of August 1802, and a drawing dated December 1803, which was found in South Wales for a three-foot gauge Trevithick type locomotive, have led historians astray. More on that drawing later. So on to Penudaran. Penudaran, as you probably can guess, is in Wales. It's in South Wales near Merthyr Tydfil, the heart of the South Welsh iron and coal industry. And it was here that Trevithick definitely did build a locomotive. The iron works at Penudaran were owned by the Humphrey brothers, Samuel, Jeremiah and Thomas. Uh, they were not Welsh, they were in fact from Stourbridge. And it was with Samuel Humphrey that Richard Crochet staked a bet of 500 guineas, or about £23,000 in today's money, whether this locomotive could take a load of 10 tonnes down the full length of the Penudaran line, accompanied by only a single man, and then return with the empties. The trip to decide the bet was made on the 21st of February 1804. Trevithick wrote the next day. Yesterday we proceeded on our journey with the engine. We carried 10 tons of iron, five wagons and 70 men riding on them the whole of the journey. It's above nine miles, which we performed in four hours and five minutes, but we had to cut down some trees and remove some large rocks out of the road. The engine, while working, went nearly five miles per hour. There was no water put into the boiler from the time we started until we arrived at our journey's end. The coal consumed was 200 weight. On our return home, about four miles from the shipping place of the iron, one of the small bolts that fastened the axle to the boiler broke and let all the water out of the boiler, which prevented the engine returning until this evening. The adjudicator, one Anthony Hill, proved to be a hair splitter and refused to pay the bet on the basis of several quibbles, including that the track had to be slewed through the Plymouth Tunnel to create more clearance and the failure of the locomotive's water pump. The Penodaran locomotive was more manageable than horses, and it was easily able to draw a load of 10 tons, and as Trevithick notes, it was worked for several days, running the full nine and a half mile length of the Penudaran tramway. Trevithick even planned that the engine should pull Samuel Humphrey's coach along the tramway, making it the first passenger train pulled by a steam locomotive. Unfortunately, it was found too heavy for the brittle cast iron tram plates. The engine ended its days as a colliery winding engine at Fossy Fran coal pit, where it was probably scrapped in 1859. The Penodaran locomotive was the first rail-borne vehicle to move under its own power. It was carried on four flangeless iron wheels and weighed about five tons without water in the boiler. 
The boiler was made from cast iron and it had a wrought iron return flue and a wrought iron chimney. It had a single horizontal cylinder, 8.5 inches bore and 4 feet 6 inches stroke. Exhaust steam from the cylinder passed through a water heater before being discharged via a blast pipe in the chimney. It was Richard Trevithick who first noted and described and understood the effect of exhaust steam on the fire. He noted, Fire burns much better when the steam goes up the chimney than when the engine is idle. It makes the draught much stronger by going up the chimney. Everyone looked as attentively as possible into the fireplace, while the engine moved at the rate of a few strokes a minute, and all agreed in declaring that the fire brightened each time the steam obtained admission into the chimney as the engine made its stroke. Working pressure was probably 50 pounds per square inch, and there was a spring-loaded safety valve, another innovation of Trevithick. Although he never built such an engine, but he did patent one, Trevithick also deserves the credit for the use of two cylinders working cranks set 90 degrees apart, by which means the action of the engine became more, quote, equable, and it became unnecessary to load the work with a flywheel. This was another crucial breakthrough in the development of the steam engine and for the steam locomotive. Trevithick conclusively proved that thanks to the use of high-pressure steam, a steam engine could be built sufficiently lightly to propel itself, and that there was enough friction between iron wheels and an iron rail to allow such a machine to move itself along. He wrote, When that engine in Wales travelled on the tram road, which was very smooth, yet all the power could not slip round the wheels when the engine was chained to a strong post for that particular experiment. Sadly, there are no contemporary drawings of the Penudaran locomotive. When a drawing emerged in South Wales in 1855 showing a geared Trevithick locomotive, it was initially and immediately thought to show the Penudaran engine. It was a four-wheeler with a geared drive, a single cylinder and a massive flywheel. It all fitted the bill. But on closer examination, it couldn't be the Penudaran engine, as the gauge was all wrong. Penudaran was laid to a gauge of 4 feet 4 inches, and the drawing was for a gauge of 3 feet. The other dimensions were wrong too. Furthermore, given the presence of the small Plymouth tunnel on the Penudaran tramway, a large flywheel and a tall chimney simply would not fit through the tunnel. And this isn't a new problem. Railway historians have been wrestling with it since the 1950s. And in 2019, a team of leading academics reassessed all the known evidence for the Penudaran engine and concluded that it must have had a very small flywheel, or none at all, a short chimney, and that the cylinder was at the opposite end to the firebox, similar to the known drawing of Trevithick's wagon engine of October 1804, and to the engine Trevithick built in 1805 at Gateshead, of which drawings survive. A working replica of the Gateshead locomotive was built by the Welsh Industrial and Maritime Museum in Cardiff in 1981, best thought to represent the Penudaran locomotive. It is now on display in Swansea. But what of the drawing found in 1855? As part of the 2019 reassessment of all the evidence for the Penudaran locomotive, it was concluded that this drawing probably represents a locomotive built by Trevithick for the three-foot gauge Tredegar Ironworks tramway. Unfortunately for railway history, the often prickly Trevithick fell out with his sponsor, Samuel Humphrey. Humphrey subsequently purchased the patent right to Trevithick's high-pressure engines, which included his locomotives, which meant that Trevithick was no longer able to build his own engines. Trevithick's next locomotive adventure was Catch Me Who Can, which was built to run around a circular demonstration line in London in summer 1808. A locomotive pioneer he may have been, but a businessman he was not. In 1811, he was lured to South America by promises of riches in the silver mines, and where he was found destitute by Robert Stevenson in 1827. It was Robert who paid for his fair home, but on the way, the pair of them were shipwrecked. Trevithick died in poverty in 1833. So those are the basics on Trevithick's Penudaran locomotive. 
the world's first railway locomotive, built way back in 1804 in South Wales. What do you think about Richard Stravithik and his Penodaran locomotive? Keep the conversation going in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, and if you haven't already, please help the channel grow by liking, sharing and subscribing. And as a bit of a teaser, there will be a question and answer session when we hit 300 subscribers. If you'd like to find out more about Richard Trevithick and other STEAM pioneers, check out my book, Before Rocket, available from Gresley Books.